everybody to another awesome episode of Wine, Hops, and Road Stop Shot on location deep within the bowels of the Latimer compound in Latimer, Pennsylvania. I am with my awesome wife, co-host, best friend, Desiree Bonomo. How are you today? I am excellent. Yes, we're shooting this on a Sunday afternoon, which is different for us. It's a little odd, but we had some things to do on Saturday. So we're pretty wide awake. We're ready to drink, ready to talk about wine and good food and good beer and all that good stuff. So if you like what we do... Best way to get in touch with us is facebook.com. Slash wine hops and road stops. Get on there. Get onto our group. Talk to Desiree, right? Yes. So what are you doing in the group now? You have some new things that we're doing with the wine hops and road stops group. Yes. On Fridays, we have Fun Fact Friday. And that's uh, just a little video about something fun, something you didn't know, something you wanted to know about booze, liquor, food, prohibition, drinking myths. All that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a video thing along with some text and stuff. So you really get to um, hear a little bit more from Desiree during the week, uh, not just the show. Right. And you also do Warm Up Wednesday. Yes. That's where I post a uh, fun drink to warm up your Wednesday for the weekend. (laughs) To prepare yourself for the weekend. So you got two things during the week when you're not watching our show to uh, look forward to and, of course, always... Tell us what you like. Show us uh, some beer you're drinking, some wine you're drinking, some spirits, maybe an uh, uh, interesting drink you're making, or some good food. Plug some restaurants that you like. Why not? Everything's opening back up finally. It looks like uh, things are kind of getting back to normal as much as they can right now, and we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, take a picture of whatever good you're eating, because yeah. I want to see it. Yes. Okay, so, well, with all that out of the way, let's get to some booze news, because this is it's all... This version of the Booze News is all British. It's all about our friends over in the pond. And it's also about my favorite band. Did you practice your accent? I'm not going to do that. I'm not... I haven't been drinking yet. (laughs) Iron Maiden announces Hellcat. BrewDog, the leading global craft brewer, is teaming up with Iron Maiden, Jeff's favorite band, who are also one of the world's most successful and revered rock bands. That's right, to launch the Hellcat, which is an India Pale Lager. In fall 2021, Hellcat is described as a feisty 6% ABV India Pale Lager, where hops and malts collide. Hellcat rages with a citrus-forward flavor with no less aggressive malty backbone. The result is a hazy gold IPL with an epically complex balance. Now, we've had other Iron Maiden beers on the show because, like right here, (laughs) is the Trooper. (laughs) There was, this is like the collector's can that the trooper comes in. I had to buy that the one night uh, when I was out. Uh, Iron Man is my favorite band, and, you know, the amount of care they take with their music is just the same amount of care they take with choosing who they team up with when they make beers. Uh, the trooper beer is really good. They did a trooper IPA, which was even better. They did. We did Fear to Dark not too long not ago. Not long ago, yes. Thank you, uh, Matt Manganelli <laughs> donated Fear to Dark. For us to try, which was which was great. That was that was a really good beer. That was very good. So I'm looking forward to this because I like Brew Dog and I like Iron Maiden. Yeah, good I mean, combo. I mean, you know what? Let me just like it was me, made for you. Let me rephrase that. I love Brew Dog <laughs> and I love Iron Maiden. So yes, yeah, so we're really excited for the fall. Now, I've had IPLs before, mm-hmm. which you know basically tastes like a hoppier lager uh, because yeah. that's it's India Pale Lager. That's so. my kind of thing. It is I your like kind of thing. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're looking forward to that. Right? I really meant I am. <laughs> Well, hey, more British news. We're going to talk about the Queen of England now. Queen Elizabeth launches her own beer. Buckingham Palace has confirmed to People magazine that the 95-year-old monarch has approved the sale of a range of beers brewed from plants grown on her Sandrickham estate in Norfolk. Two varieties, a cold-filtered traditional English bitter... And a stronger golden IPA. What do you think about that? That sounds pretty good. Yeah, we're going to have to go to England, I think, to get it. I don't know if it's going to be sold around here. I well, think it's only sold at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to make some flight arrangements. I guess so. I, I'd like to go there, actually. That's on the bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know when we're going to get there, but maybe. You know, on our way to Germany and Ireland and Italy. <laughs> oh, you got a lot of big dreams, dear. <laughs> I'll have to make more episodes of Wine Hops and Road Stops. That would be pretty cool across the pond, right? Ooh, yeah. Oh, we're definitely taking cameras if we go. Oh, yeah. 
Another cool thing that uh, I realized, you know, reading this article was uh, last year, um, Buckingham Palace also launched its very own gin made from ingredients found in the backyard of the Queen's London home. Yeah, well, her backyard's not like ours. I mean, ours is pretty big, but hers is like the size of a small state. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> I just so. got a lot of stuff growing back there. Yeah. Like, like like botanicals to make gin. Yeah. Yeah, I would try that. I would I'd definitely try and see what that's like. I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a big gin lover too. So. Yeah. Hey, she's quite the rock star. Ninety five years old making beer <laughs> gin. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, be me. You're the queen of England. What else do you gotta do besides being queen? And she's probably you know. Collecting fancy hats. Yeah, fancy hats. <laughs> yes. All right. That's all the booze news we got. And uh, don't go away. We got more wine hunts and road stops coming up after the break. Where we're going to sample a few beers and, because you asked for it, another sour. Because she asked for it, we got a certain type of sour. Plus, we're going to talk about wine, what you should do and should not do when you go to a wine festival. Because that's happening really soon. We'll be right back with more Wine Hops and Road Stops after this. Welcome back to Wine Hops and Road Stops, shot on location, the Latimer Compound. I'm with Desiree Bonomo, once again, my co-host, my best friend, my wife, and we are going to talk about some beers. What do we have in front of us? Ooh, today we have uh, Yingling Flight. Now, we've been trying to get a hold of this for a while, We've been, and every time we're like, well, we should try Yingling Flight, it, something else happens, and we never get it on the show, but now we have it because uh, springtime is here, Yes. and this is supposed to be uh, a low-cal beer. Uh-huh. So we're gonna see uh, how it matches up with this other next locale beer that we have. Yes, this is a uh, Goose Island Solo. Okay, pretty low. It's supposed to be pretty uh, low on. It's carbs pretty low on everything. On everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next up, we have uh, Funk Brewing Company's Cruisin. Okay, and what's that? Uh, that's a Belgian style white ale. Okay, interesting. And the one we were waiting for. Yeah, we got a fourth beer. <laughs> Usually we do three. We got four this. This episode. Um, this is Artisanal Brewery's uh, Warheads Blue Raspberry okay. Sour Ale. Why and, did we get this? Why Why is this here? Well, you know, we had to try that sour ale on the last yeah, one. Yeah, and you were talking about Warheads. Right? And we were talking about Warheads, so I had to go out and find it, because I have to try it. Yeah, you... Whether I like it or not. You like Warheads, though. I well, do, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I get it. I did when hey. I was a kid. <laughs> okay, well, we'll so see. we'll see. We'll see how... Uh, just matches up to uh, your yeah. memories of Warheads. I like Warheads too, but I don't really like sour beers, but we're gonna try it anyway. Now, uh, we're gonna get right into this, but first I gotta say thank you to my mother-in-law for getting me this opener. I uh, hope, Hopefully our daughter's not gonna be mad. We're not using her opener today. This is Jeffrey Friendly, so yes. he shouldn't have a problem This opener this came from Florida because uh, your mom just came back from Florida. Mm -hmm. she, she, all by herself she went. She I was did. very yes. proud of her, yeah. Yes, she did good. She made it home in and one she, piece. And she brought me back an alligator opener. <laughs> I love it. She tried alligator while she was down there. Yeah, I've had alligator before. It's delicious. All right. Came off. No problem. All right. Okay. Let's get some glasses over here. Let's try out Yingling Flight. All right. I'm excited. From the Yingling Brewery. This, the oldest brewery in the United States. It's not too far from where we shoot this. And it is a staple of Pennsylvania, basically. I mean, all throughout northeastern and central Pennsylvania. And now beyond, because they're... That's some, one thing we didn't talk about in the booze news was the fact that Yingling is now brewing out of, like, many places. They just shipped their secret recipe in, like, an armored truck to, like, their <laughs> new place where they're going to be making beer. So soon, yeah. the world's going to have Yingling. Now, we did talk about that when they started brewing down in Florida. Yes. And we were wondering mm -hmm. if it would taste any different. Yeah. Now, my mom did try it when she was down there. And? And she said it didn't taste any different. She had no idea it was Really? So the else. secret isn't the Pottsville water? No, I guess oh, not. Okay. I'm, I'm going to maintain that it is, though. Well, let's see. <laughs> okay, this is a light beer. It doesn't smell like anything. It probably is not going to taste anything. It's American light lager, so... It's gonna be easy drinking. It's gonna be have. It's gonna have a crisp finish. It's gonna have everything that like a normal light lager is. And hopefully, it's a little bit better than your domestics. It is a Yingling product, so I'm waiting for that Yingling finish at the end. So let's try it. <laughs> All right. 
exactly what I thought. Yeah. Easy drinking, clean. You could you could get rid of one of these really quickly. And okay. at the end, there's that... The only way I could describe the, it... The Pottsville Bite? The Pottsville <laughs> Bite, the Yingling finish. Uh, it, there's the same finish. All their beers finish the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> glad because I didn't want them to mess with anything. They didn't. It's good. Now, give me Bye. some specs on this. You said it's... Light, it's low in everything, and it's easy drinking. It is 95 calories and 4.2% ABV, so pff, you could put these down no problem on a hot summer day. 2.6 grams of carbs. Mm. So if you're watching your carbs, you got that too. So uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not your kind of beer, it's but not. if it was, it would be a good choice. It's a lawnmower beer. Well, yeah. You cut the grass, you drink this. Yeah. It would be very refreshing. Now, next up, we have something that I'm more interested in, which is Goose Island's Low Cal IPA. Now, this one is really low in everything, pretty much, including an ABV of, I think, like, whoa, boy, oh. of like 3%. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to continue because this is... It's not low on carbonation. <laughs> live on tape, so... <laughs> Let's go. Drippies. Yeah. Now this has 98 calories and Thanks, 99 carbs. So Ugh. a little bit more. It's all over my cheat sheet. <laughs> okay. So, so it's supposed to be big on hops, long cows. I just made that worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. Mm. Let's see how it stacks up to the yingling. No, it has more taste. I'll give it, has it, right. a yeah, it has a different smell. It has a better nose to it. It has like I said, more taste. There's a uh, not too bad. Yeah. It says it's big on hops, low on calories, beautifully balanced, and uh, yeah, yeah, big aroma. Uh, ABV is three percent, so that's really, really low. That's like the a, lowest I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tiny. But you have to remember also, this is a light lager. This one is a light IPA. Yeah. So they're gonna taste a little different. Oh, it's, it's completely different, and I like this one better. It has more flavor to it. Uh, not too bad. If you if you are watching your wait for the springtime, summertime, and you want to drink an IPA, there's a couple of them you could go to. This is one of them probably. This isn't too bad. The IBU is 40, so it's not really bitter. Uh, the hops are Idaho 7, Kahatu, and Chinook. And you can taste it, definitely can taste the Chinook in this. Mm. That's a pretty good beer, yeah. surprisingly. And the other ones we've done on the show in the past have been, um, Dogfish Head has one that was pretty good, but still that one tasted like a like a watered down sixty man. Now Lagunitas, I believe it was was it called Slightly Mighty or was that the Dogfish? That's Dogfish. Okay, Lagunitas has one too. That one was my favorite when we did it before. Uh, that one is the closest to a regular IPA, I think. This one's not too bad though. <laughs> I have to, I, I put this one up against the dogfish head six, uh, the whatever it is, the slightly mighty, the, the, the locale dogfish. It's, it's, it's real similar. Yeah. So. I think I'm a bigger Goose Island fan than you are. Yeah, you are. I, I feel like they, you know, do everything just right. So. so this is just right for you? It's pretty good, yeah. Good. Well, I'm going to move on to this one, Cruisin', which is a Belgian-style white ale by Funk Brewing. Hopefully this one doesn't explode on me. Oh, it was just a Goose Island, did not like me. All right. I'm very interested in this one. Um, someone I know frequents the Funk Brewing Tap Room very often. And Did they recommend this? Not this one in particular, um, but he has great things to say about them. Um, so I'm Overall. really interested okay. in what this is going to be like. Plus, oh. it's one of my very favorite types of beer. Yeah, you do like the Belgian ale, yeah. so. All right. I don't, I'm not getting much out of this. Um, eh, it, not bad. Um, Smooth. What do you think? You're the Belgian lady, so. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. Maybe I should have had a glass of water in between because I'm still tasting that. I'm not tasting much from it. Have a glass of water. Let's try that. Remember, and this is this goes for everything. Like, and we try to do this, but sometimes we forget. In between styles of beers, you really, really should drink some water, uh, especially if you're gonna go from. You know, like when we do like IPAs to stouts, we definitely have to cleanse, cleanse our palate. But you should do that between every beer. 
this is more bitter than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm used to the bitterness, so this I'm not getting a lot of that from it. it's kind of smooth. There's a little bit of orange taste to it. It's kind of okay. I'm not I, getting any of that. <laughs> you don't get the orange flavor? No. A little bitter. So you can realize at the end there's a little bit of bitterness, but I'm used to that because you know I like a lot of bitter beers. I like a lot of like hop hopped up beers and stuff. Right. So. This isn't what I was expecting, but uh, I wouldn't give up on funk just yet. We'll maybe we'll try them again. We'll you, see. You can give up on that one. This one, yeah, I was kind of hoping this would be a good pool beer, but uh, not for me. No, they're not, it's not. A, it's not a good pool beer. I don't think uh -uh. so. There's too much. There's too much like uh, bitterness at the end there. Yeah. Pool beer should be closer to these two, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have a glass right. of water. Now I need the water. Yeah. yeah that wasn't the problem though. No, but for the next one, you gotta be ready. This is a sour beer. Oh, yes, it is. Art Artisanal Beer Works. Mm -hmm. Warhead Extreme Sour. We got a blue. We got the blue raspberry. Was there a reason why you picked blue raspberry? Because that's the best Warhead flavor. <laughs> I may have to agree. It's, oh, it's quite it's blue. It's blue. Yay! It's blue. Ooh, it's my favorite color. It blue is, too. It, it is. It is. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it is my favorite color. It's bringing me back to uh, being young. <sighs> yeah, on the bus. Singing songs on the school. Songs. Eating warheads. Not singing songs on a school bus. Yeah. A lot of people hated taking the school bus. We liked it. You guys were so loud. Yeah, well that was <laughs> Angelo's fault. <laughs> Angelo. Singing do wah diddy on the way to school. He used to. Well, you know what? He was hyper. <laughs> <laughs> Seven in the morning, the damn guy's screaming from the back of the bus and he's making everyone sing. The bus driver really hated us. Hated it was us. so quiet on that bus until we hit your stop. My stop? Angelo, no, Angelo was up the street from me. There was like a hundred of you that got on at that pole. <laughs> I'm just drinking. Oh, oh that smells good. Mm. Smells accurate. Whoa! It tastes like a warhead. Yes, it really does. As it should, because they teamed up with Impact Confections okay. that makes Warhead candy. Right. So and that's they weren't they just the, winging it. They right, got they it right. They got the face on and everything, yeah. That's probably my face right now. <laughs> this, this bar is so wet. <laughs> I've got a wet bar. Okay. Uh, there's no lactose in it, though. Uh -uh. They added something else to it. Seized turt? Whatever that is, I don't know. It, it must be the way they try to say she's tart after they've had one. <laughs> she's tart! <laughs> well, whatever they added to it, um, they increased the puckerness of it, so... Is okay. it sour? You know what, though? If I like sour beers, I'd be really into this. It it has a really good flavor to it, though. It tastes good. It does. I don't yeah, mind it, it. Now, this came in a four-pack with four different flavors. I picked this one because this was always my favorite. But I think I'm going to try the rest. Yeah, I could, you know, I don't know if I could drink a whole thing of this, but I, I would I would try it. I would try well, it. Well, dear, you'll have to split one with me. Okay. <laughs> it does smell like a warhead. It tastes like a warhead. It's, it's, it's like a liquid warhead. Yeah. Good job. 5% ABV on this one. This is like the biggest beer we had today. <laughs> oh. But this would be a slow sipping beer because you're not going to just down it like that. <laughs> mm. Make that face again? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go to break. When we come back, there is more White House and Road Stops. We're going to talk about the wine fests and the beer festivals that are coming up this <gasps> summer Yay. and what to do and what not to do when you go wine tasting. So we're going to talk about wine. We haven't talked about wine in a while, so uh, we're going to talk about wine. Okay. All right, don't go away. We'll be right back. and road stops shot on location at the Latimer compound if you like what you see and you want to talk to us and let us know what you think about the show or where we should go next or what we should do facebook.com slash wine hops and the road stops that's our facebook page and wine hops and road stops.com is our website that we launched not too long ago well, pretty recently and uh we uploaded all of our shows going back to the beginning uh not too long ago we uploaded all the shows to our own youtube page so uh if you don't if you don't mind liking and subscribe to that, let's get uh, 
Let's get the subscriptions up on that because that's where you can find all of our shows. And of course, you can find them on Facebook and all that good stuff. Yes. So, what are we going to talk about now? What to do and what not to do at a wine tasting. Okay, yeah. So, it's because like things are opening up and summer's right around the corner. So, that means wine festivals and beer festivals. But we're going to talk about wine festivals because someone said to me the other day, you don't talk about wine enough, and it's in your name. Well, hey, look, some wineries want to come on the show, just let me know. You know how to get in touch with me. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about some uh, do's and do nots uh, for wine tasting. Number one, of course, go with a group. Nothing makes tasting more enjoyable than sharing it with your friends. Pace yourself. This is about tasting the wine and enjoying the flavors and nuances. If you overindulge, you'll have missed so much. Plus, you'll run the danger of being that guy or girl. Yeah, don't be that guy. <laughs> I, 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 I insist. You know, you watch this show. We teach you how to enjoy responsibly. Don't be that guy. I hate that guy. <laughs> There's or always girl. one. <laughs> one? <laughs> and sometimes it is that girl. Sometimes I was that guy long ago, and I've learned not to be that guy. I've <laughs> never been that girl. <laughs> Moving on. Swirl the wine. It releases aromas and sniff it before drinking. Smells often based on personal perception and experience. This is one of my favorites. Don't be intimidated by words like earthy, grassy, forest, acidic, and other wine descriptive words. However you describe the wine is fine. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that, you know, because sometimes, you know, people that... that aren't that into it and go to these these things or these wine tastings and wine festivals and you'll hear the person pouring the wine saying stuff like that you know and using these big words that you have no idea why they're <laughs> describing wine that way don't worry about it just just whatever you like you like however you want hey look it tastes like cherries perfect yeah, right. you know? <laughs> I, I never can actually find those flavors that they're telling me are in there oh it's nutty and it tastes like this I, it tastes like Good wine, I don't know. Now, my cousin Amber, she's very good at that. Mm, okay. But she just can't seem to get that through my head, <laughs> so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> now, number five is important, too. Don't chug your wine and ask for a refill. It's just rude. Don't pound it down. <laughs> Sip it. Sip it. Enjoy it. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I'm not very cultured. <laughs> eh. But most important, have a plan in place for transportation. Have a designated driver, Uber, hire a limo, which is always fun. Yeah. Just get a group of people and do that. Absolutely. But don't drive. Be no. smart. It's more enjoyable that way and way safer for everybody. I agree. I agree. So there you go. If you're going to go to a wine festival or just a wine tasting, you know, because a lot of these wineries, you can go and just taste a couple of wines. There's a lot of wine trails in Pennsylvania and in New York. I know my mother loves to go up to the Finger Lakes all the time of New York. And, uh, you know, follow these rules if you're going to go from, you know, place to place. Of course, make sure you don't drive. You know, it's, that's dumb. Because wine can... <laughs> Can knock you on your butt. <laughs> yeah, I can creep up on you pretty fast. Yeah. Do yeah. you think your mom knows like these flavors like earthy and nutty and <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. It's it's a toss up with my mom. <laughs> but she likes her wine. I'll, she I'll knows what she likes. Now let's talk about something that uh, I was just informed not too long ago. It's going to go on August twenty eighth, Hazelton Rotary Wine and Beer Festival. That's been going on for a long time now, probably around nine, ten years now. Uh, I've been involved with it almost since the beginning. Uh, we go, the show goes there and we do a report there every time we can. Uh, I perform there with my band and I'm going to be there again. It's going to be at the Lewis Shivel City View Park in Hazleton. And for more information, of course, visit hazeltonrotary.org. Get your tickets, uh, come. It's a full day from noon to eight. Um... It does benefit some scholarship programs uh, through the Hazleton Rotary, so it's a good cause. There's a lot of food vendors, there's a yeah. lot of wineries, there's a lot of breweries, a lot of things. And me, and, and Des will be there too. We'll be there. I will be there. Yeah, it's be such a good time. It's a, always a really nice day. There's never any problems. I mean, we just have a great time there. We do. We do. So, uh, I just want to plug that, uh, <laughs> plug those guys that uh, put it together. And um, hopefully but we'll see you August 28th. This gives them the 
a chance to come drink with us. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, when you see us out, and you know, we'll see us there. Don't be afraid to come say hi. Please. Uh, it just happened to us on Saturday night. Yeah. We went out to dinner with some friends uh, for Maureen's birthday. Happy birthday, Maureen! And uh, one of the waitresses says, "I watch you every week," and I was like, "Well, thank you. That means so much to us. Yeah. It really does. It does." And more and more, as more and more people recognize us, it tells me that. People are watching, which is great. More and more. I mean, show's been going strong for almost four years now. So when we come back, we're going to wrap things up. So don't go away. There's more wine hops and road stops coming up after this. That's all the time we have on wine hops and road stops. I want to thank you. And I want to thank my wife and everyone else for watching and hanging out with me and, you know, doing everything we do. Well, you're cool to hang out with. I am pretty cool. <laughs> yep. So we got the beers are done. Tried some more heads, we talked about some wine. Uh, good show today, Des. You did, you did well getting these beers together. She usually gets the beers together, by the way. Yeah, so if they're not good, that's my fault too. So well, <laughs> these two weren't bad, you know. No. If, if you're watching your, your carb intake and your calorie intake, these two weren't bad. I'm surprised that uh, that sour beer wasn't totally horrible. You know what I think it is about the sour beers? The ones that taste, that have like a vinegary taste, I don't like. Mm -mm. Because I love vinegar. No. Like that one didn't. That one, one tastes like warheads, like candy, so. Yeah, it tastes just like candy. Well, it's all the time we have. Uh, Winehops and Roadstops.com is our website, and of course, Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com, Winehops and Roadstops. Join the group and talk to her, because she's <laughs> always on the group posting stuff, so. Till then, life is too short to have a bad beer. Drink a good beer. Drink a one you love. We'll see you next time on Wine Hops and Road Stops. Goodbye. Mwah.